Hi, everybody. Great to see you. Um, today, I want to share with you some of the basic ideas that uh, lay behind and <coughs> are also in front of, in a certain sense, our main discussion document. This is the first of three documents that will frame our discussion uh, for our convention over the next few months. This one deals with the political situation in the country, the climate, how we got here, and how to get out of here. Um, the second one will deal with the uh, role of the party in the uh, next period, what kind of mass revolutionary working class party we're trying to build in the uh, conditions of the United States today. And then thirdly, uh, we'll have one on the international situation. Very dangerous with the prospect of not only a regional, but heaven forbid, world war. Well, the, the uh, first thing that I want to say uh, about our document is that it upholds our concept of that the main uh, task before the country is defeating the MAGA right. You know, and the need to build a broad coalition uh, in order to accomplish that. But we also argue that uh, working class leadership of that coalition for us is a principal question, fighting for that working class leadership. Because without it, all of the pressure is going to come from the ruling class. And you know what that means. And so therefore, our, our whole emphasis is on putting the working class and trade unions uh, in the forefront of this battle. Um, the second thing that the document in its opening paragraph says is that this is a political crisis. And it is clear and present and, 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 and grave at the same time, we posit the idea that it is a symptom of an even deeper crisis, a crisis of the capitalist system as a whole that produces this fascist danger. And if you'll allow me, it, 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 we, we, we argue in the document that, that, that behind that crisis, that the, the basis for it, it kind of grows out of the whole history of the emergence of monopoly capitalism and imperialism in this country. And, and the existence of a racist and sexist social division of, of labor. A racist and sexist social division of labor. We don't use that term in the document but that's basically what we mean, you know, that, that it's kind of built into the uh, DNA of American capitalism, its political economy and the political superstructure, you know. I'm talking about slavery. We're talking about uh, uh, the genocide against the indigenous Native American populations. We're talking about patriarchy and the exploitation of women with... We're talking about um, bonded labor, indentured servitude, and these, these systems of, of uh, exploitation that, that, that not only built the country into what it is, but, but these very systems of exploitation and the commonality of that exploitation and oppression serve as the basis for fighting against it, you know? And, and, and we argue that out of this, the struggle around this exploitation, the class struggle, two very different visions, paths, uh, about where the country ought to go have emerged. One is capitalist, it's reactionary, uh, it's, it's conservative, uh, it trends towards fascism, don't it? The other is uh, profoundly uh, progressive, democratic, liberatory, emancipatory, 
uh, motivated by deep concepts of equality. One is represented by a figure like Trump and MAGA. The other, the, the do document puts forward the great figure personage of Martin Luther King Jr. and everything that he represented. On the one side, you have a white republic, but that's what they're aiming for. Uh, on the other, our concept, our concept of a uh, multiracial, multi-gender, advanced people's democracy on the road to working class power, anti-monopoly, on the road to socialism. And if you'll allow me a second kind of theoretical point, the document upholds one of the main propositions of our party's program where we argue that that road to socialism, y'all, is paved with the struggle for democracy, uh, the fight to collectively bargain, the right to collectively bargain, huh? the, the right uh, to vote, to determine our destinies, abortion rights, control over our bodies, uh, the right to education, right to health care, um, right to, to housing, to, to breathe clean air, the right to a sustainable environment, the, the right to, 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 to love who you want to love today. I mean, you can't step on that anymore. Uh, ain't nobody having that. And, and we, in fact, we spend a lot of time in our document, uh, talking about the fight for democracy, you know, and and what it means for us, and we do so because we feel like there's uh, misconceptions about our strategic policy and what it's based on. You know, it's not about uh, endorsing a individual. It's not about supporting a particular personality or even a, a particular political party. It's about building mass movements on issues uh, among those I just enumerated and where we get the greatest leverage, you know, based on where we are in the country and, 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 and what we're involved in. Um, and, 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 and that's the issue. Uh, for us and and always has been and we we say this because it's about fighting for space because with one side you ain't got no space you got dictatorship you won't even be able to have this conversation you know that's those are the stakes that we're dealing with and we look we know that people are furious uh, with the uh, Biden policy on Gaza not having it, you know, and we're furious too. In fact, we condemn it unequivocally, and not just on Gaza, on China, Cold War 2.0, on Cuba, on Venezuela. But the issue is, what do you do about it? You know, do you sit on your hands, or, or are we engaged in building mass movements? And in fact, we are, and, and in fact, that is what is happening, and I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. And we spend a little bit of time in the document uh, talking about making the point that this is not the first time that we've been in this situation. We were here in the 60s, and we point out to what happened. Uh, where here again, we when, when in the 60s, what happened when we faced a triple threat of uh, an extreme right danger, uh, uh, severe racial oppression at home. We had uh, legal segregation in the South, uh, uh, segregation by custom in the North, deep poverty, and the conduct of a racist imperialist war in Vietnam supported by both parties, 500,000 troops fighting. 
and 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 we talk about the 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 genius of Martin Luther King Jr. and the civil rights leadership who who grabbed hold to those central threads, those central fault lines in the edifice of the uh, uh, imperialist system, and they pulled on them. They pulled on them, and they and, and they built a mass uh, transformative movement by linking them together that changed, it literally changed the course of history. You know, you had the passing of the Civil Rights Act, the uh, Fair Housing Act, the passing of Medicare and, and uh, Medicaid, they, they, they call that in the Civil Rights and Freedom Movement the second uh, uh, reconstruction. And we argue that, uh, that this is what we gotta do today. You know, mass movement around the issues on Gaza, on abortion rights, on voting rights, on health care, on housing, on the environment. And, and the document, folks, are uh, filled with optimism about the possibility for doing so. Just in the last two years, there have been two new, what we call political moments have emerged. You know, there's been a tremendous growth in the uh, democratic uh, uh, fight back around abortion rights, particularly after the Dobbs decision, you know, so wonderfully demonstrated uh, in the midterm elections uh, in uh, 2022. And then there's been this tremendous growth in, in class struggle, a new class struggle moment, we say. Uh, not only in the number of strikes in their, and in their quantity, but also in their quality. And not just in the number of strikes and their quality and quality, but in public support for them. I mean, it's upwards of 60, 70, 80 percent, historic. And a growth in class consciousness. I mean, Brother Fain, the president of the UAW, he, he ain't pulling no punches. He said it's the billionaire class against the working class and, and never the twain shall meet. And not just him, you know, it's, 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 it's present on the picket lines, it's present in negotiations, it's present on the shop floor. Workers, our class ain't, 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 ain't having it. And it's present in the expression of, of international solidarity uh, once again, on Gaza, union after union are coming out. We were with the trade union comrades the other night, and they, they made the point that, you know, some 200 uh, local, regional, national unions have uh, come out, demand, challenging Biden directly on Israel and God, demand, on Gaza, demanding a ceasefire. SEIU, Postal Workers, UAW, uh, CWA, uh, the Coalition of uh, Labor Union Women, uh, the United Electrical Workers, you name it, uh, demanding uh, an immediate uh, ceasefire. Um, historic, powerful, uh, representing the sentiment of of, of, of the membership uh, around the country. Yes, there is this deep, thoroughgoing radicalization that also produced a distrust and disgust with capitalism and a desire for socialism. And we assert that and, 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 and not only assert it, but we try to provide the scientific data that, that supports it. Um, a socialist moment that, that, that grew in 2016, blossomed in 2020, and is uh, still present. But we also pull forward the idea of don't we need a socialist moment 2.0 um, that is brilliant as, and wonderful and exciting as the discussion about socialism that occurred around the Sanders campaign, 
we also recognized that it was a little bit of an amorphous socialism. It was, it was a little bit of a utopian and flavor, uh, an outlook socialism. And we say, yeah, we need a working class socialism, don't we? I mean, led by workers intellectually, organizationally, culturally, don't we? We need a socialism uh, led by women. By, by people of color, black, brown, Asian, Arab, Native American, Pacific Islander. We need a socialism um, led by the disabled. Am I wrong? A, a, a socialism led by LGBTQ people, a, a scientific socialism based, based on the best uh, traditions and culture of our country, um, and and the document kind of comes to an end by saying it's, you can almost see it, it's just around the corner, just on the horizon, just over there, and it urges us to march forward and grab hold to it as we march down the road to the convention and after it uh, to the polls in the effort to, to defeat the extreme right. One union leader said it recently, y'all, we got a choice between a third reconstruction or a second edition of the Confederacy. Those are the stakes. Um, we look forward to a constructive, uh, a rich, deep, thoroughgoing conversation um, see you on the front lines, and thanks for listening.